Number 10, Ray Romano. While listening to Ray Romano's voice for hours on end may be one of the harshest punishments ever conceived. Seriously, I wouldn't want to do that. What I was actually referring to was his portrayal of the woolly mammoth in Ice Age. Yes, the large tusk beast of the Forgotten Era. They were tough, and if Cross would surely spell the end of any Neanderthal brave enough to face one alone, which I'm sure at some point was. Cause trouble in the tribe? Well then you have to bring us dinner, and we're hungry so please go single handedly and hunt and bring back a woolly mammoth. I couldn't even imagine. Unfortunately for those Neanderthals, this isn't Star Wars and they weren't Boba Fett. Bringing back the head of a beast single handed wasn't going to happen. They were most likely going to get trampled and left for archaeologists left to find thousands of years later. Yeah, no thanks. Number 9. Cliff while the Neanderthals might not have been as smart as their homo sapien counterparts, they were not exactly idiots. You find a high enough cliff, and you push said banished member off the cliff. It's simple, but effective. There's a good chance that whomever gets pushed off said cliff will not cause trouble for the tribe any longer. This is something that many civilizations would do for many years. The Greeks, the Romans, just about everyone really. You can't blame them either. It's cheap and quick, and if the cliff or ledge is high enough, you don't ever have to worry about cleaning up. Although I wouldn't do it in a pit like the Spartans. That would just fill up too quickly. And no shot that was the first time that Leonidas kicked a dude in the pit, let's be honest. Is there someone who empties the hole later? Cliffs are just easier. Just, just easier. Number 8, Ear Infections. Okay, not exactly a punishment, but it could be a punishment from up above. Hear me out. Not exactly sure who did this to the Neanderthals. Maybe it was God, maybe it was evolution, maybe it was something else. But the Neanderthals were cursed with something that I don't ever want to experience again. Shout out to the people who don't want to put their head underwater because after about 5 hours, the bonfire on the beach isn't so fun with your friends because you have an ear infection. Yes, that's right, ear infections. I'm sure I just described someone's least favorite summer night. Well, according to a study in 2019, ear infections were common in Neanderthals and may have ruined many meals by the fireside. While humans like us eventually grow out of them due to our ears' insides growing larger as we grow older, the inside of Neanderthals' ears stayed small and were a perfect place for bacteria. And like most folks, you're not you when you're hungry. You're also not you if you can't hear the arctic monkeys playing by the bonfire because of a really bad ear infection. Honestly, if you ever had one, I'm just sorry. Number 7. Stick. This should come as no surprise, but a lot of problems or punishments were probably dealt with in the almighty stick. Cheap, somewhat effective, and in good supply. There's tons of expression for who's got the bigger stick, but like General Shepard from Modern Warfare 2 said, it also depends on who's swinging it. We'll never really know who was the first human-like creature to pick up a stick and wave it, but what we do know is that sticks are a part of everyday life, like tools and hunting. The sticks can also make for an excellent punishment delivering device. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but names can never hurt me. Well, maybe sometimes. Honestly, the only time I've ever been really hurt is when the world lost Harambe. Rest in peace, you silverback angel. <sighs> Life's never been the same since. Number six, rock. And you smell what the rock is cooking. Man, I miss the old rock. I miss the WWE. Those were just good times, weren't they? Stone Cold too, what a great guy. Speaking of rocks. Probably the next best thing to a stick is a rock. Probably even cheaper and more plentiful than sticks. All kinds of punishments can be derived from rocks. Simple techniques such as having the tribe fill baskets full of rocks and then throw them at you until you're seeing stars or just ceasing to exist. Or in a similar situation, throwing someone off of a cliff, take a semi-large rock and drop it from a large height on top of somebody's head. Methods are different, however it usually ends up in the same results. Just wait till they find out what kind of minerals and ores are hiding in those rocks. Oh the discovery of metal and metalworking. Number 5. Good soup. Perhaps we'll never know where any of these punishments truly come from, but like all things they had to come from somewhere. Maybe they did come from Neanderthals. What I'm talking about here is boiling people alive in oil. Ah, the good old days, which honestly sounds like the worst way to go. I, it just can't be nice. A practice that yet again was done all over. Giving people the lobster treatment must have been the worst looking, the worst sounding, and the worst smelling way to unalive someone. I happen to be a lover of theater, but man, this is a little too much. It's hard to call this anything but theatrics, as I'm sure there were much easier ways to achieve uh, certain goals. Honestly, you could probably cough on someone and would achieve the same result. Boy, am I thankful for sanitation. Number 4, Sacrifice. 
when your source of food gets taken away and then the rain doesn't stop for six days and six nights, and when your favorite VHS no longer works, it can truly only be an act of God. We have to please him, set a bunch of ooga booga men around the campfire, but how do we do this? Well, that's usually when the quiet person in the back speaks up. Sacrifice someone to the gods, he says. <laughs> All right, sounds good to me. This was something that went on in many cultures around the world, but it makes you wonder who really was the first to try it, or rather keep trying it. I mean, hey, the buffalo came back, the rain stopped, and I just found my favorite VHS. Dude, we gotta sacrifice more people. Number three, the brazen bull. This might be the oldest punishment on the books. It also may be the worst. Seriously, this, this one's the worst. Similar to boiling in oil, however, this is just, just much worse. The brazen bull, basically what you got here is a bull made of bronze, and she's hollowed out like one of those walker things from Star Wars, all the little stormtroopers in it. So you put the perpetrators inside, you lock them in, and then you start a fire underneath that would essentially cook your perps to well done. Make sure your perps are well oiled and salted. Keep on high heat until the screaming stops or the desired sin has been cooked away. Yeah, I can't even begin to imagine the horrible feeling that would be locked inside there. No amount of aloe vera could ever fix those burns. Number two, dishonored burial. You are born, you live, and then you pass away. That's life. You gotta make the best of it. And at the very end, the least you can hope for is that the people will love you and give you the proper send off that you deserve. This was a serious deal for those in the olden times. Every culture from every corner of the world has some sort of burial and ritual rites. However, imagine if you were the tribe's disgrace. Perhaps you ate all their food or never contributed to the tribe. Maybe you're the reason why my favorite VHS tape went missing. Well, sir or madam, for your crimes and disrespect against this tribe, when you pass on, you will not receive the proper burial rites. There's been a few cases of remains dug up different from others, which begs the question, what did the person do to deserve such dishonors? And what did they do with my favorite VHS tape? Number one, banishment. Hello darkness, my old friend. In the same way that most teenagers across the country feel when they discover hair dye, punk rock, and feelings, is probably the same way Neanderthals feel when they were banished from their homes. A simple plan, really. Non-violent, but quite effective. As you walked along the boulevard of broken dreams, you'd be searching for a new home in the brutal, cold, and scary world that was ye olde times. Not even your offspring will know you, as you may never return. Besides, you're in too deep, and you're trying to keep yourself alive with anything that you can find. The all-American rejected teenagers do this kind of isolation from the comfort of their warm, isolated bedrooms that are paid for by loving parents. The Neanderthals were serious, as leaving the safety of your numbers had many disadvantages. Not being eaten by a predator, for one. Stay strong, kids. Stay strong. Kicking off the list at number 10, burials. This list is full of interesting objects that Neanderthals created, like tools or weapons, that kind of stuff. But the idea of burying your loved one after they've passed on, well, that had to start somewhere, didn't it? Ancient Egyptians arguably did it the best. The rich were buried with their treasure and goods because they believed that death on our world was just the start. There was another life afterwards and they would take their treasure and good stuff with them. Bye. Not leaving anything for you, I'm taking all this with me. Neanderthals didn't figure out how to build tombs yet or how to rule for decades. Studies done in Western Europe suggest that Neanderthals would sometimes bury their dead and leave flowers. Flowers or a grave marker of some sort. Pollen was found in Northern Iraq's Shandir Caves. Shandir Cave is a staple when it comes to Neanderthal history. And the fact that flowers were found in the middle of a cave system, some humans and emotions are definitely at play here. This was symbolic thinking. The weather didn't make it easy to collect flowers as well. Loved ones passing during an ice age? Yeah, I'll never complain about an outdoor funeral again. Number nine, glass. Imagine making glass for the first time. You would have thought you were a wizard for sure. I watch glass blowing shows now and it looks like wizardry. Wizardry in 4K. Glass blowing is nuts, they're just like <clears throat> And it's just like a vase all of a sudden. You're like, how did he do that? That's so hot. Glass that was naturally occurring, like obsidian for example, that was around and used during the Stone Age. Man-made glass was first used around 6,000 years ago. Man-made glass, yeah, let's talk about it. Archaeologists are pinning Lebanon, North Syria, and ancient Egypt as the birthplace of synthetic glass. The first use of man-made glass were beads, believe it or not. Imagine being the first person to rock beads. Ah, the confidence. Mid-2000 BC, guy decides to glaze up some beads. What an icon. Now we get to do this. The beads, it's a cool door. Number eight, sharpened stones. 
Some of the oldest tools in history could be laying in front of you and you would have zero idea. You'd have no clue. Coming from the shores of Lake Tucana in Kenya, these stone tools date back to around three million years ago. Yeah, these are predating the tools before that I mentioned by like 700,000 years. They seem to predate humans in the Homo genus as well, so that's interesting, that's kind of concerning. The volcanic ash and minerals around these sharpened stones date back that far, millions of years old. Stones in history can get a little dirty, to say the least. Not all these ideas that involve stones or sharpened stones are the best. French anthropologist Philippe Charlier shared toilet hygiene history in the British Medical Journal. Perhaps one of the most intriguing parts explains how these flat terracotta discs were found in ancient Greek sites and they had residue on them. They had a certain residue on these sharp rocks. They used to with these stones, yeah. They also discovered a Greek cup which said three stones are enough to wipe one's arse. Three? I don't know, that's at least five, my friend. Greeks would use stones to wipe. Never take the go for granted ever again. Number seven, axes. The Neolithic period, also referred to as the New Stone Age, introduced us to many vital tools that we still use today. Like an axe, for example. Around 10,000 BC, Neanderthals moved from being these small hunter-gatherer type groups to these much larger settlements. In order to do so, you had to clear a lot of land. Humans evolved at this point in history because that's when we went from flaking stones to grinding them down entirely. We put a little more elbow grease in in order to clear those trees out to build a settlement or two or three or five. Neolithic axes were found at sites in England and Denmark. This one here was found in great condition, alarmingly great condition, like look at this thing. It was uncovered during archeological surveys for a tunnel project in Denmark. Imagine finding a 5,500 year old ax in the middle of your shift. And in case you're wondering, the lack of oxygen in the surrounding clay is the reason why the wooden handle was preserved so well. It almost seems like it was placed there as some type of offering. My first thought is that it's for sure belonging to the Odin Thor family. I don't know, it's, it's placed downwards, you know what I mean? No one touch it. Number six, spears and arrows. Perhaps one of the most vital inventions, one we for sure still use today, always, of course. Arrows and spears were a necessity when it came to hunting, and for people in the Stone Age, all they needed really was wood. They would carve a leaf shape at the end or a triangle at the tip, and then they were mainly used by riders or barefoot hunters. But when it came to hunting, you didn't want to get too close to your prey, or else the wrong team could be claiming victory and eat the other for lunch. You get what I'm saying? So their solution was to huck these spears instead, or make really tiny ones that you can throw or shoot. The oldest bows in history are from 9000 BC. They're the home guard bows. They're found in Northern Europe all the way back from the Mesolithic period. The oldest spears, however, they come from Germany around 400,000 years ago, and they're actually the oldest wooden artifacts ever in history. Imagine being the first person to make a spear. Forget iPhones, a spear? That's a big deal. Number five, flutes. We love a solid flutist. They're flutists, right? Flutest? Uh, <laughs> dude, I've always wanted to play the flute. Pied Piper, that guy is daring, that guy is wild. He runs around town and plays the jazz flute all day long in tights. Of course I want to be like that, mostly, he's got some flaws. But who is the first person to bust out We Three Kings? Who do we have to blame for all those horrible recorder classes in elementary school? I was the one kid next to you, you're like, drain the spit, it's not on properly. Cover your, use that pinky, cover your thing up. The first instrument known to man was most likely our vocal cords, but the second instrument were the flutes of Glycin Coastal Cave. They're the oldest musical instruments that have ever been discovered. They were made from bird bone and the ivory of a mammoth. Yeah, so that's an indication how old they are. They made music out of mammoth ivory. That's old. Brass? Like, no, 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 we haven't found that yet. Number four, paintings. Yeah, why not? Let's include art into this mix. Who was the first person to create art? The Lascaux Caves have been dubbed the prehistoric Sistine Chapel. These cave paintings are from 17,000 years ago and they're beautiful. But if you're thinking about sneaking down there to write Jordan was here, well, you better think again. The cave was opened originally in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels and sweat from visitors and just people breathing and being around, it was closed in 1963. You can't be breathing on our prehistoric paintings. Get your morning dad breath out of here, sir. We don't want that. Look how beautiful it is. It's really nice. <sighs> Learning about our history is challenging, but it's slowly fading away. We're breathing on it all day long. But these caves in France are not home to the oldest paintings in the world, believe it or not. Altamira Cave in Spain houses cave paintings from 35,000 years ago. The paintings were in such great condition that at first scientists doubted that they were the real deal from that long ago. But in 1902, they were marked as the real deal. These ochre and charcoal images are the most well-preserved on the planet. Meanwhile, I'm over here still drawing the sun in the corner of my page. Number three, blades. 
Around 80,000 years ago, the first ever five o'clock shadow appeared. And it wasn't my family, we, didn't, we don't have those. An upper Paleolithic stone tool tradition came from Neanderthals and also the first modern human, it's a big deal. This method here was to shave up your face so you're not you know, eating your own mustache for dinner and it was entirely new to the game. During this process, Neanderthals would often break off these sharp flakes from the core of a large stone and then use those chips as blades. Horrible, just imagining that. The Aurignacian culture, appropriately named after the French village of Aurignac, where Neanderthal remains were found back in 1860, this culture is the first modern human in Europe. Looking back to around 100,000 years ago, we had to use seashells. And when I say seashells to get rid of hair, I don't mean they would you know, glide across the skin or anything like that. They would use two shells, then use them together as tweezers. Yeah, one by one. Seashells, can you imagine? That's horrible. Can you hear that? That's the sound of our ancestors plucking their unibrow. Sounds painful, right? Uh, yes, it was. Trapping clamshells were later used in the 19th century because we realized that they're flat enough we could probably just swipe off the hair. It saved a lot of time. Still horrible, but we saved a lot of time. We figured it out. Number two, the wheel. One of the greatest inventions of all time, and now all we want is hover cars. How disrespectful, we just got this thing. The wheel, the idea of the wheel is unlike any other. See, most inventors are inspired by nature. Planes, submarines, bullet trains, all has something to do with nature, bird beaks, flying, underwater, all that crap. Nothing in nature resembles a wheel at all. The closest thing really are tumbleweeds and dung beetles. My favorite thing to mention on this uh, channel, the poop rollers. Potter wheels were found from Mesopotamia around 5,500 years ago. Now it's hard to pinpoint who used the wheel first and where, I mean, given the fact that it was that long ago, but the front runners so far aside from Mesopotamia are the Tripoli people of modern Ukraine because the word wheel literally is derived from their language, but the wheelbarrow may have appeared in ancient Greece around 600 BCE. They say you can't reinvent the wheel, but I feel like you can. At least this early in time, I feel like we did. Number one, fire. Of course. I mean, next to the wheel, this one was, you know, it's pretty important, I'd say. When was fire first used in history? Well, a study done in 2011 was published in the Proceedings of National Academy of Science, and it showed that Neanderthals were firebenders. Not really, no. They were just, after carefully examining over 140 fireplace sites in Europe, the University of Colorado Boulder found some stone artifacts and charcoal dating back to 400,000 years ago. Now, of course, these fireplaces were used to cook meals, but at the same time, tools were created during this process. Melting things and moving them around, kind of like glass blowing, heat makes things come to life. Neanderthals would use something called pitch. Pitch was made by burning the bark of birch trees. It allowed them to attach stones to wooden shafts, which is a pretty big deal when it came to hammers and tools. Inventing glue is one thing, but doing it while you're working the barbecue? Whose dad was that? That's impressive, that's so impressive. Guys making tools while making lunch. Kicking off the list at number 10, the first fossil. Before we get into some mysterious happenings and all that jazz, we have to talk about the very first Neanderthal skull that was discovered. This discovery came about back in 1829. The skull was found in a cave near Angus, Belgium. And at the time, they didn't even realize this was the skull of a Neanderthal. That knowledge came much later. Around 1856, quarry workers were ripping apart limestone in the Fidelfer Cave near the German city Dusseldorf. It was found in a place called Neanderthal. How fun is that? It was a small valley of the Dussel River. The skull was human, but it wasn't. This was game changing, literally. Number nine, home sweet home. Neanderthals lived thousands of years ago in cold environments such as England and Siberia, but they also lived in warm places as well. Warm woodlands in Spain and Italy, one or the other. So their home, their shelter rather, would vary in design. In order to survive the weather conditions, Neanderthals needed all hands on deck. Minerals, flora, fauna, fishing, hunting, it doesn't matter which season it is, you're hunting and supplying for your people. Neanderthals hunted down bison often, or reindeer, mammoths, antelopes, wolves, bears, even birds and hares. If you were an animal, you were being hunted and used in some way, shape, or form. Sorry, we're hungry. Neanderthals created tools to help them hunt. If they were in an area surrounded by flocks of birds, they crafted arrows. If they were near wild bison, they crafted spears. But they would just yuck. They would adapt their game. Number eight, craftsmen. Doesn't matter how far back you go, art will always be around in some way, shape, or literal form. Neanderthal craftsmen would carry with them a pouch. And in that pouch, it includes lithic flakes, sharp rock flakes to cut anything. Scrapers would be used to cut animal meat or carve wood. Pressure tools were also in there as well, the sharpen, the you know other tools I just mentioned. Just tools for tools in a big old pouch. Neanderthals would use hard rock napping and use striking techniques, and sometimes they would carve art. 
Yeah, Neanderthal carvings were discovered in Unicorn Cave over in Germany recently. Archaeologists found 50,000 year old deer bone with patterns carved into it. Either these guys were bored or they were expressing themselves. Eh, I say both. Number seven, extinction. Neanderthals emerged 400,000 years ago. We've always thought that their extinction was caused by some sort of event, right? Some catastrophic wipeout. Very recently, a human tooth was discovered in a cave in southern France. The tooth is from 54,000 years ago. Now, this is important. We've always thought that Neanderthals went extinct 40,000 years ago when modern humans started rolling around. But this new discovery could mean that the two species may have coexisted at the same time. Did modern humans wipe out Neanderthals? Are Homo sapiens to blame for the extinction of Neanderthals? Ooh. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, hey, hit that thumbs up button. What's up, gang? Cheers. For wiping out people and gangs and civilizations. I'm like, oh. I'm just asking you to subscribe, please. Number six, lunchtime. I'll have no idea what to eat for lunch from time to time, you know, but sometimes I'll straight up complain about it. Like I'll actually whine. I'll be like, oh, I don't know what to eat. How can I choose? Ooh, like what? I need to remind myself this is not a problem at all. Neanderthals would of course have to hunt in order to eat, but what if they couldn't hunt? Then what did they eat? Hart and Tartar hinted at their diet. They would eat mussels, dolphin, seal, tons of plants. This came to light after part of a seal's jaw was discovered in Vanguard Cave in Gibraltar. The jaw had man-made cut marks in it, marks from tools that I mentioned earlier. It's all coming together. See, we're starting to figure out Neanderthals as a unit. This is what we're here for. Number five, more art. Here's where we're at with Neanderthals and art. First of all, we don't have actual representational art yet, but we do have symbolism. That's pretty close, it's close enough for me. And just as fascinating, in my opinion. Especially when they look like this. Yeah, these are eagle talons. They're about 130,000 years old, and they were found in Krapina Neanderthal site in Croatia. Researchers believe they were part of a jewelry set, like earrings, or maybe it was part of a necklace or something like that. I couldn't even make this now with a YouTube tutorial. You know what I mean? Like, how impressive is this? That's definitely art also, not symbolism. That's like, this is like cosplay. This is done so well. This is hours and hours of work. Number four, speak. You ever see Planet of the Apes? Like the new one, not the old ones with Marky Mark Wahlberg out of breath all the time. The voice acting in the new ones and the motion capture with Andy Serkis, oh, it's just fascinating. Turns out they would sound way scarier in real life. Research done back in 2016 shows that macaques have a vocal tract capable of speaking. The lucky thing is they just don't have the brain power to make words happen. We figured that out. We kind of evolved and we started talking and a vocal box started to get stronger and stuff. But if monkeys were to talk, this is what they would sound like. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? <laughs> Imagine a macaque saying that to you, I would be like, no thank you, sorry sir. Yeah, Neanderthals probably sounded like this. That thing is so scary, I was fine before I heard this. I didn't want to know what they sounded like, but I couldn't help myself, so now you have to suffer along with me. We still have no idea what Neanderthal sounded like, of course, we need a preserved voice box to do so, but it's probably something around here, maybe a bit more human, which is, I think, scarier to me. Will you marry me? Maybe it's something like that. They for sure spoke to one another. The way they lived, their social lives, for sure vocal. Will you you subscribe to our channel. <laughs> so scary. Number three, Pit of Bones. Pit of the Bones in Northern Spain. First of all, what a horrible nickname. I mean, I get it, but <sighs> okay. Since 1976, well over 6,000 human fossils have been found. They found around 28 individual Neanderthals in total. You know what, I take that back. Pit of Bones is actually a great name, really nails it. The skeletons date back to around 430,000 years ago, and in terms of facial features, these are for sure Neanderthals. DNA tests were also done, Neanderthal lineage confirmed. And a big old pile of bones. Haunting, but sweet. That's what history is. Bumblebee, haunting, but sweet. Maybe that's our new uh, catchphrase. Haunting, but sweet, no. Number two, medicine. So far, you can only imagine the various injuries Neanderthals would have. Hunting down a mammoth or a bison three times the size of you, for sure, you're gonna pull something at some point. Odds are you're gonna get a bruise. So what did Neanderthals do at this point? When they're down for the count, then what? How did they recover? Is that what the pile of bones are for? Ooh, I'm finally connecting it, that's so dark. How did Neanderthals live so long without a pharmacy? All that yelling, no halls? Neanderthals' medical skills are pretty similar to what our ancestors did. Herbal remedies, baby, that's pretty much it. They manage fevers, but they manage fevers, but when the pain got so bad, chewing on a specific tree may have helped them tolerate the pain. 40,000 years before penicillin, Neanderthals were just literally chewing on aspirin. We love it. And finally, number one, human sacrifice. Archaeology is fascinating, but the deeper we dig into our earth, the more we find out about our haunting past. And our past is pretty shady. We don't want to know too much. It's like, oh, we used to do what? Cover that back up. 
Usually these findings are horrible. Not too long ago, we found the remains of a 3,000 year old skeleton in Greece. And they found this skeleton on the side of Mount Lycaon, which historians know is the site of animal sacrifice for Zeus. For Zeus, the in Zeus. Ancient writers mentioned this site and how human sacrifice was also at play here. And now thanks to technology, we can confirm that this is indeed the case. We scanned it and we're like, oh yeah, for sure. This is not an accident. The upper part of the skull was missing and the body was laid out on two lines of stones with stone slaps laid on their pelvis. We look at Greece, of course, as the birthplace of philosophy, democracy, and the 100 meter hurdles and all that jazz. But they also did some sacrifice in their early human days. And their time off, you know, when they weren't slamming weak Merlot. Science has allowed us to look all over the world too, not just Greece. Ancient Egyptians and Aztecs, sometimes after Mayan ball games way back in the day, the losing team would be sacrificed. That would suck. Game, good game, good game, good game. Good game. Good game.